Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to another video. Today what we're going to be doing is comparing uh, some rechargeable batteries. So rechargeable batteries are different types, as you've seen in the title. Um, nickel metal hydride NIMH versus lithium ion, uh, normally noted as Li ion batteries. And what I've got here to compare or to help to look at differences between some of these batteries is two different types of chargers and two different types of batteries. So the charger I've been using for quite some time now, probably coming up to about two years, is this Duracell charger here. And this charger only charges nickel metal hydride Duracell batteries, such as these ones over here. They're quite expensive to buy, but uh, they do a very good job. Um, they're probably amongst the premium uh, range of rechargeable batteries that are available on the market today. And as you can see there, they've got a pretty high current rating of 2,500 milliamps per hour. So these batteries, you can see this is still in a pack. I'll explain to you why these are in a pack later on. I've got many unpacked batteries, of which a couple of them are here. Uh, same batteries, just an older model, so they had a different design on the old ones. The new ones have got a slightly nicer design, in my opinion. They look closer to the alkaline sort of uh, Duracell batteries that you'd buy. Uh, and then the other type of charger I've got here, which is new, uh, I'm going to be unpacking this. It's not a very exciting unboxing, but I'm going to just open it up in front of you so you can see. This is a lithium-ion battery charger, um, which also comes with eight lithium-ion batteries. And it is from a company um, called EBL, not sure what that stands for. I'm sure it's written somewhere on the box. I purchased this from Amazon for about 30 quid. It was on sale. Um, and I fancy trying out uh, different technology of batteries, one that we're very familiar with from what we see in our phones, lithium ion type batteries. Um, now, let's start off comparing some of these. While I open this box up, I'm not going to talk through opening. Just as I'm opening it up, I'm just going to talk through the differences of some of these batteries. So, nickel metal hydride batteries and IMH batteries like these. Um, these generally, um, you won't find batteries that are rechargeable and IMH batteries, as far as I can see on the market anyway, that are going to give you or rated 1.5 volts of power, right? Or, or voltage, I shouldn't say power, voltage, right? You're not going to get something that's rated at 1.5 volts. Um, I'm comparing AA to AA only. You're not going to get a 1.5 volt AA battery, um, which is uh, of a NIMH kind. What I did find uh, was, as I was browsing through different rechargeable battery types, was that I found some lithium-ion batteries um, on eBay. Uh, sorry, on Amazon, definitely on eBay. I said eBay because of EBL. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I bought the batteries uh, because they were rated at 1.5 volts, not particularly because I needed them, because it was interesting to see rechargeable batteries at 1.5 volt. And just to uh, make a very important point while I'm here and so I don't forget to make it I didn't fully look at the specifications of the batteries when I bought them um, I actually um, ended up just uh, getting a bit excited and I bought them unfortunately without paying too much attention to the fact that there's something you really need to be careful with when you're buying batteries don't make the mistake I made so there is the mistake I'll point it out I'll point out exactly what it is um, this battery says 3000 milliwatts hour MWH. That is significantly different from something that says 2500, or forget the number, but milliamp hour. That is a massive difference. Why? I'll explain. So when you look at the numbers, you see 3000 and you see 2500. And I got very excited and I thought, ah, there's a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is rated at 1.5 volts. Why wouldn't I buy this battery? It's got higher capacity. It's got, uh, it's, it's, it's got more voltage. Um, and it's a lithium ion battery. And there's some benefits of that that I'll explain very shortly. Why wouldn't I want this battery instead of this battery when everything looked better here? And then when it came through the post and I opened it up, the W caught my eye and I thought, ah, have I actually made a mistake here? Have I? not being paying attention to what I'm uh, ordering and have I, you know, well, obviously I hadn't paid attention, but, um, or, or was the product listed incorrectly on Amazon and to credit to Amazon, it definitely wasn't listed incorrectly on their website. It was myself that made a mistake and went ahead and bought these batteries. So anyway, no, 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 no big loss, right? They were 30 pound. They're still going to be great. I'm sure they've got fantastic reviews, but I'm just going to quickly, uh, I'm actually going to pause the video and just run and get a pen and paper because I want to do a calculation for you to show you what the difference is between 3000 
um, milliwatt hour and 2,500 milliamp hour. One, and I'm back. So I've got a bit of paper here and I've just stolen my son's felt tip pen quickly just to write out a quick calculation. So we know these batteries are 3,000 milliwatt hour. So the calculation or, or the old formula is, if I remember correctly from my uh, electrical engineering days, I'll draw the triangle was uh, power, in which is measured in watts. So hence the 3,000 milliwatt hour um, is equal to uh, voltage times current or current times voltage. You can do it either way you want, right? So voltage, we know in this case is measured in volts and the current is in amps. So hence we want to find out what the milliamp hour is versus the watts. So current, which is uh, abbreviated by I, is um, measured in amps. So I'm just going to hold that to the camera a little bit so you can see it a bit better there. So there you go, that's the formula. So if we just write out the figures that we have, we know the power. So from this, we know that power is equal to voltage times current. Um, so power, in this case, 3000 is equal to, um, and, and I know it's milli, so I'm going to just leave it as 3000 for now, right? Uh, so 3000 um, equals to voltage, which is 1.5. Um, and the reason why I'm leaving this in, in milli uh, watts rather than converting it uh, is because I'm going to just calculate the amp in milliamps as well, right? So the units are going to be equivalent, so it's not a problem. So I've got is equal to 1.5, which is the voltage, times my amps, which is what I want to find out, right? I want to find out what my current is in amps or milliamps. So if I then want to actually get the value of that, I'm just going to divide by 1.5, 1.5, and obviously I'll be doing a division of 1.5 here as well, so that becomes 1. So the value of my current uh, in amps or milliamps is going to be 3000 over 1.5, which I believe is 2000. So that's the calculation. I'll just hold it up to the camera. So what I've got actually is I've not got a 3000 milliamp hour battery as I thought I had. I obviously misread uh, it. I've got a 3000 milliwatt hour battery, which is a 2000 milliamp battery. So where well, I initially got excited and made a purchase, um, of what I thought was a, a bigger capacity battery. Well, it's it's definitely one that drives a higher voltage, but from a capacity perspective, it's got a bit less. But let's just quickly talk about the other differences here, right? So, and then we'll do some tests with a battery tester. I've got a little battery tester here, cheap battery tester of Amazon, costs about eight quid, definitely worth buying one and keeping handy if you're using rechargeable batteries. Um, so uh, differences, nickel metal hydride batteries, um, they suffer from memory effect. Lithium ion batteries, as we know them, don't suffer from memory effect. What is the memory effect? Memory effect is effectively uh, an issue which um, you would experience with nickel metro hydro batteries where when you're charged, it's, it's dependent on a charge cycle, right? So if the battery is not completely depleted and it's low um, and you put it on charge again, obviously because you need a fully charged battery, um, the nickel metal hydride batteries, the problem is, is um, the memory effect means that they think that they start thinking that that low voltage, which isn't completely empty voltage, is the actual baseline zero of that battery. So you effectively lose some capacity in the battery, and ultimately, um, that that will probably reduce the quality and and long longevity of your battery life right, or of your battery. So um, potentially less battery life. Now, unfortunately for me, in the last couple of years, I have had a couple of batteries that have probably suffered from that, and they don't fully charge anymore. Um, these aren't those batteries. These are good batteries, but they don't fully charge anymore. And when I stick them in the charger, instead of getting a green light, eventually these lights just start flashing red after a little while, and it's telling me that the batteries are degraded, right? So another reason why I fancy trying a different technology, so I've got the lithium ion here. So what I did do before, uh, just to talk about, similarly about the, so, so one more thing with nickel metal hydride batteries is um, they do have a higher internal resistance. What does this mean? It means that um, if you're using um, uh, any sort of a, a device that needs a high quick current draw, you're probably going to get more from one of these batteries, even though at this point, unfortunately, it's rated a lot less a milliamp. Um, so these might still do you the job anyway. They probably will do. But the higher internal resistance ultimately means um, that the current draw is is not as uh, fast as a um, 
lithium-ion battery just due to the nature of the actual technology within the battery, right, the makeup of the battery. Um, the property results in it having a higher internal resistance. Lithium-ion batteries have a, a lot lower internal resistance, so they can deliver that burst of current um, a lot quicker um, or in larger uh, amounts, I guess, in a shorter interval of time versus these batteries. And that would mean because there's low internal resistance, the batteries aren't going to get as hot. Um, another thing, I guess, simple and not really important is uh, there's a massive difference in weight. So the NIMH batteries, again, due to the properties of the battery, are generally heavier than the um, the lithium-ion batteries. Lithium-ion batteries are a lot lighter. Um, they'll run cooler. They're not going to get as hot as these batteries because these have got a high internal resistance. Um, but I think I'm, I'm expecting in terms of lifetime, I'm probably going to get roughly the same sort of um, usage out of these batteries. Again, it depends on what application is and what you're putting them in. But I don't think there's going to be massive difference in time in terms of, you know, one's going to run out a lot quicker than the other. But we'll, we'll soon find out, right? I haven't used these yet. What I did do before I started testing this video, uh, recording this video, or, and I haven't tested these batteries yet again, is I, I cheated. I unboxed these before. So confession, I cheated. I unboxed these a little, little bit before or about a day before recording this video. And as you saw, it wasn't much to unbox anyway, right? But I, I opened it and char charged four batteries up just for one particular reason. And I did the same with these two Duracell batteries here. I want to check the voltage of fully charged batteries, lithium-ion batteries versus fully charged uh, NIMH Duracell batteries. So we'll check the uh, we'll check using that voltmeter there in a second. And then what we'd also do is now it comes back into why do I have a packed set of batteries? I've got these batteries lying in my drawer for about two months. Both these types of batteries should, the, because these are those premium grade rechargeable batteries that are guaranteed to give you some um, slow self discharge, um, these will hold power for a considerable amount of time. So they've been lying, these have been lying, this pack anyway, has been lying in my drawer, sealed as it is, as you can see, for about probably two to three months, if I can remember correctly, say two months. And God knows how long they were in the warehouse where they got delivered from. I think it was Amazon anyway. Um, so we will open these up, a fresh pack of Duracells, and see what voltage rating we're getting out of them. And then we'll also test this pack here. So I've only fully charged one set of batteries. These are fully charged. We'll compare these to the fully charged. We'll compare the out of the box to the out of the box now. I know these haven't been sitting in my drawer for two months, but it's the best comparison we can do, right? So we'll do it anyway. Um, just to quickly talk about the chargers, the Duracell one's a massive brick, but then, and, you know, it has its own proprietary charge uh, power pack there, so it runs on a DC uh, adapter of its own. I haven't got that here on the table because it's tucked under my desk, but there we go. This little one, I mean, look how tiny that is, but then the difference here is this is only going to charge double A's and treble A's where this is going to charge absolutely everything, including the 9-volt um, the nine volt block batteries, right? So this is going to charge your Bs and Cs and Ds and you name it, whatever you want it to charge, it will charge it. It's a great charger. I've never had any problems with it. And it's from a brand we know and love, Duracell. This thing is tiny. It's light. God knows how long it's going to last. It's got a micro USB port. And it came with a nice uh, micro little micro USB cable there, which I've got plenty of lying in the drawer somewhere. Um, and they don't give a pl plug. It just tells you that you need to use a five, um, is it? Uh, let's have a look, five volt, two amp um, rated plug to charge the batteries, I think. So somewhere on the box. Yeah, so it tells you input voltage is should be five volt, two amps. Um, and I'm sure I've got plenty of spare chargers kicking around that I'll be able to use to charge these batteries up, right? which I have because I have already used it, and there you go. So without further ado, let's start testing the battery. So first and foremost, let's go with the Duracell, right? Duracell fully charged, has not been touched since I charged them, and I've got two so we can compare the readings. So let's go ahead and check that now. So what are we getting? We are seeing, surprisingly, 1.4 volts. That's interesting because these batteries are only rated at 1.2 volts. Um, so if I hold that up to the camera there, you may or may not be able to see it because of the light. Um, probably not, unfortunately. But these are rated at 1.2 volts. That's a 1.2 volt battery. Um, interesting. Let's quickly test the other one. So again, fully charged Duracell. 
what is the power rating and the voltage is coming at, again at 1.4 yes 1.4 volts I, I think it's fair to say that they are consistent right so these are two fully charged Joseph batteries showing 1.4 volts which is 0.2 volts higher than the actual uh, specification of the battery now let's go for the EBL which are rated at 1.5 volts so if I try and hold it there you may or may not be able to see it um, 1.5 volt battery there uh, I'm, I'm really sorry if the camera's not focusing on that but 1.5 volts you have to take my word for it so let's test a couple of these in the charger right in, in the tester right so here we go right okay so 1.51 1.52 so I think it's fair to say that's giving us the voltage that it says it's going to give us which is good to see we're not getting knockoffs and again let's just test two for good measure that's also giving you a good reading so 1.5 sitting at 1.53 nicely right so um there you go why don't we just test the other two while we're here as well right quickly i'll just test one more we won't test all of them just to get a nice average 1.52 i think we can call that average 1.52 between the three batteries um so there you go fully charged batteries we're definitely getting full voltage out of both of them well this one we're getting full voltage duracells we're getting more than we bargained for uh, it's always good to see that. I mean, you wouldn't really expect any less of Duracells anyway. So at the moment, I guess these are possibly winning. Now, let's go and tear open the brand new set of batteries, right? So I'm just going to put these aside. Let's go and tear open a brand new pack of Duracell. Stay charged. All singing and dancing. Double A batteries. Let's just take a couple out. Sitting on the shelf for God knows how long. Let's see what we get. Right, 1.28 volts, so less less than the fully charged battery that I've charged up. But, you know, that's been sitting there for months, right? So that's not bad, is it, really? 1.28 volts there. And again, another battery, let's just check that. 1.25 volts. So there you have it. I mean, batteries that have been sitting there for months, holding, holding good charge, right? It does what it says it's going to do and again i've said it many times but you wouldn't expect any less of duracell especially when you're paying uh, you're paying premium for those so i'd be disappointed if it was any less to be honest now let's go with ebl out of the box uncharged untouched the first time they're going to be touched by my hands there we have it let's check what the voltage on that is what we're we looking at here wow so you know what Maybe I'd pointlessly fully charge the other batteries, but I did want to do a fair test. They're still delivering 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.52, 1 1.53 volts. Let's just test one more, right? I'll test one here. Again, I have not touched these batteries at all before this recording. First time I've touched them, 1.52 volts. So you're pretty much getting fully charged batteries. How long they were sitting in the warehouse? Who knows? Um, how long they last? Again, who knows, right? But Lower internal resistance would probably be great for high, high draw current current draw applications. Such as, I don't know, if you've got a, a digital SLR camera and you've got one of those humongous speed lights, I have one of those. That definitely is very, very current hungry. Um, those short bursts of uh, high current draw every time you fire off, um, you know, that strobe on that speed light. Uh, these batteries would probably be great for something like that. But having said that, I know these batteries are great in it because I bought Duracell batteries a long time ago, rechargeables, to use them in the speed light, and they work absolutely fine in there. They last, you get, you get a good couple of hundred shots, if not more, um, out of one fully charged set of Duracell. So I think we're expecting roughly even performance from these. A bit less voltage, a bit more current, a bit more voltage, a bit less current. You know what? I think they're both going to be great sets of batteries. If there's any questions you've got uh, you'd like me to answer around any of these, Please let me know if you want to talk about this calculation. If you think I've calculated it wrong, please let me know. If you're happy to know that that's how you can calculate stuff, please leave a thumbs up. As always, I would ask that if you have enjoyed this video, that you leave a thumbs up in the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That's roughly, I'm pointing badly in the corner of the video there somewhere. It definitely helps me and motivates me to record more videos for yourselves of all the stuff I buy. Um, and share my experiences with you and, and any knowledge or, or information I can share with you. I'm more than happy to share with you and to answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching another video. Take care and all the best.